Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG Lectures with Reed's channel. Uh, my name is Reed, and today we're going to go over ventricular escape rhythms. Please feel free to subscribe to this page if you think uh, this content is helpful, and comment with any feedback. So let's let's jump into a ventricular escape rhythm, and what is it? And so, as the name implies, the ventricular escape rhythm is a rhythm that occurs when our QRSs are coming from a ventricular escape focus, and that is what is driving our QRS. And so normal conduction in the myocardium here, if I look through this coronal slice, usually we've got our SA node, it fires off at 60 to 100 beats per minute, it depolarizes the atria. We know that the AV node then captures that signal, delays it for 120 to 200 milliseconds, and sends it down our his Purkinje system to cause ventricular depolarization. And so that's our normal uh, route of um, electrical activity. And so, you know, we've got our P wave that is from our atrial depolarization. And then you've got the QRS and T wave from our ventricular depolarization. And that QRS and a T wave in a healthy myocardium is it's a narrow QRS because we're using this fast pathway highway system that we call the his Purkinje system. And so that's a typically a narrow QRS that results. Well, in a ventricular escape rhythm, I want to remind you all that um, the myocardium, all myocardial cells have an intrinsic pacemaker capability. And so we know that the SA node's pacemaker capability is 60 to 100 beats per minute. The AV junction can beat at around 40 to 60 beats per minute. In the ventricular myocardium, these cells can beat at maybe 20 to 40 beats per minute intrinsically. Now we really don't ever see often these intrinsic beats from the ventricles or from the AV junction because our sinus node is driving the rhythm and is driving depolarization of all these cells and so they reset with every SA node firing Every time the AV node conducts to the ventricles and the ventricles fire, it resets, so we don't see these. But we can get an escape rhythm if somewhere in this circuit is not working. And so a ventricular escape rhythm is essentially, say this focus that we've outlined right here in the ventricles is firing. It's firing at this rate, 20 to 40 beats per minute. And what it's doing is it's depolarizing the ventricles from that focus. And notice it takes a long time for the ventricles to depolarize because it is not taking the his Purkinje system. It's gonna be a wide QRS because it's coming not from that his Purkinje fiber, not from the AV node. So we're gonna see a wide QRS in a ventricular escape rhythm. We're gonna see the rate, like we already said, 20 to 40 beats per minute. And what we're also gonna notice is that the QRS axis is gonna be different. So it will change, right? Because now it's not, the axis isn't coming from the AV node and sending it down. It's actually coming from this ectopic focus and sending it a different direction. So our QRS axis will be not down and to the left typically. And what we will also notice is there will be no P waves that are driving the QRS, right? So when we see it, think of a ventricular escape rhythm or ventricular escape beats that are driving this, they are going to be slow, wide complex QRSs where we see this, maybe a wide complex QRS T wave and then we're gonna wait a long time. Then we'll see another ventricular escape beat. So that is a common look of a ventricular escape rhythm. Well, why would we get a ventricular escape rhythm? Well, if our SA node that's here, if we have say sick sinus syndrome, or we get a sinus node arrest, if the sinus node's not beating, well, the ventricles are gonna need to fire off and so maybe we see a ventricular escape beat whenever our sinus node 
is not functional and not sending signal down into the ventricles. We can also see these ventricular escape beats when we have AV block, specifically third degree or complete AV block, because if my AV node is blocked right here, even if my sinus node is firing off and sending signals down, every time it sends a signal down to the ventricles or to the AV node, the AV node blocks and says, no, you can't pass. And then the sinus node is gonna fire again and it's gonna depolarize again. But that signal is gonna get blocked at the AV node. And so in this case, there will be P waves that do not conduct to the ventricles. And so the ventricles are just sitting there idle. And if for some reason our junction that we said can beat at 40 to 60 beats per minute, if our AV junction is also part of that block, if it's also diseased, then we can't get that 40 to 60 beats per minute escape rhythm. So we end up going to this ventricular escape rhythm. So when do we see ventricular escape rhythms? We can see it one with sinus dysfunction. Two, we can see it with uh, third degree AV blocks. And that's when you see the ventricular uh, my cardiac myocytes are gonna have to take over and that's our last option. And so ventricular escape rhythms are oftentimes very lethal because 20 to 40 minute beats per minute might not be enough to sustain perfusion. So let's take a look at a couple examples of a ventricular escape rhythm. And it's just a quick rhythm strip. What you're gonna notice here is we've got slow rhythm. We can get our rate here. If we count the amount of large boxes, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe 8.5 large boxes. We can get our rate by taking 300 and dividing it by 8.5 and that gives us 300 over 8.5 gives us 35 beats per minute, so slow. I look at my QRS morphology, I notice that my QRS is wide. It looks like it's roughly maybe 180 milliseconds, which is wide. And I look in front and I look for P waves and I don't see any P waves. I see no P's. And so this looks like maybe this is a sinus arrest because our sinus node isn't generating P waves. And we've got an escape rhythm that is wide that is not being driven by the atria. It is slow and it is somewhat regular. It doesn't have to be perfectly regular, but somewhat regular. And so this is a ventricular escape rhythm. Now let's look at another example of a ventricular escape rhythm that can occur in a third degree heart block. And so if we look at the bottom of this strip, say down here, this strip, we see we've got wide complex QRSs that are occurring very slow. So these are wide. If I look at my QRS duration, it's probably just under 200, probably around the same 180 milliseconds. So it's a wide QRS. I notice that the um, rate is also incredibly slow. We've got how many big boxes in between each QRS? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right around eight big boxes. And so 300 divided by eight is 37.5. So this is 37.5 beats per minute. So now we've got a wide QRS that is going very slow. And what you'll notice is if I look for atrial activity, I can see it. I can see these P waves that are marching through. You can even see a P wave buried in that QRS, P wave. And so if I look at the P waves, there's probably a P wave buried in this QRS, P, 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 probably buried. We've got another one, another one. 
You can see this one is right here. The P waves are marching through, but the P waves are not driving these QRSs, right? Sometimes they land in front of them, but that doesn't mean that they are causing the ventricular de to depolarize. And so in this case, our sinus node is beating at a rate that is appropriate. It looks like maybe 100 beats per minute. So our sinus node is working, but we've got what looks like a third degree AV block. Well, you might say, well, read, if we have a third degree AV block, shouldn't we get a junctional escape rhythm instead? Because we said the junctional escapes would be faster. Well, in this case, the junction is also diseased. And so if the junction is diseased, then the junction cannot give junctional escape rhythm. So now we've got this wide complex QRS that is beating very slow, 37.5 beats per minute. And these are ventricular escape beats coming from somewhere within the ventricles. If you look at the axis of our ventricular escape beats, you can see it is negative in lead one, it is positive in AVF, so that means it's going down to the right so if my ventricular escape beats are going down and to the right, if I go back to my diagram, you can infer that most likely the ventricular escape rhythm is coming likely from somewhere high up and to the left, it's firing, and then my axis of depolarization is down and to the right. So you can likely say uh, this escape beat's probably coming from the left ventricle. So I hope this video helps you understand ventricular escape rhythms. Remember that these rhythms are going to occur when there are various conduction abnormalities and diseased um, anatomical waypoints for electrocardiographic um, EKGs. And so when you're looking at this, you're looking at what's the sinus node doing? Is my sinus node not working? Is my AV node not working? And likely when those two aren't working, you're, all you're left to get a QRS is from a ventricular escape rhythm. So I hope this helps and have a great day.